multiplying decimals. I have two problems here that are similar, and their products are similar and their products are different. I want us to take a look and find how are they similar, how are they different. Look at this problem. 23 times 5 is 115. 0 and 23 hundredths times 5 is 1 and 15 hundredths. These problems have the same digits, and their products have the same digits. This product does not have a decimal, but this one does. The reason that this one has a decimal is because there was a decimal in the problem. Look at this one. 43 times 2 is 86. 4 and 3 tenths times 2 is equal to 8 and 6 tenths. Again, these problems are similar because they have the same digits. It's not the same number, 43, 4 and 3 tenths, because of that decimal. Both of them are multiplied by 2. Both of their products have an 8 and a 6. One is a whole number, 86, and the other one is 8 and 6 tenths. So when we multiply numbers, it's always going to give us the same digit. But if there's a decimal in the problem, there's going to have to be a decimal in the answer. And we can also learn where the decimal goes by looking at the factors. Take a look at this. The number of digits behind a decimal in the factors will match the number of digits behind the decimal in a product. So right here I have 1 and 56 hundredths times 9, and it's going to equal these digits, but it needs a decimal. Well, it just said that the number of digits behind a decimal in the factors, so the factors are the numbers that we're multiplying together. I'm looking and I see one, two numbers, two digits behind a decimal. It's supposed to match the number of digits behind the decimal in the product. So two of these digits, because there were two digits over here behind a decimal, two of these, and yes, I'm starting at the back of the number, are going to have to be behind a decimal. And so what that tells me is that my decimal belongs here, which means that 1 in 56 hundredths times 9 is 14 and 4 hundredths. In problem number two, both of these factors have decimals. So I've got two digits behind a decimal here and one more digit behind a decimal here. So that's a total of three digits that are going to have to be behind the decimal in my product. So again, I'm starting at the back. One, two, three have to be behind a decimal. So my decimal has to come right here in front of the three. So one, two, three are behind it which tells me that 0 and 28 hundredths times 4 and 8 tenths is equal to 1 and 344 thousandths. Now we need this trick, if you will, to help us on our next model. This time we're going to multiply decimals with an area model. We've used an area model before when we've multiplied by whole numbers and it's a mix of expanded form and the distributive property. My numbers being multiplied together, the factors, were 15 and 2 tenths times 4 and 3 tenths. So I'm breaking 15 and 2 tenths apart into expanded form. That one is in the tenths place, so it's worth 10. 5 in the ones place, it's worth 5. 2 in the tenths place, so it's worth 0 and 2 tenths. And yes, I need you to put the 0 decimal and then the 2. You'll see why in just a moment. Times 4 and 3 tenths. This is my rows going across. Got a row for the 4. It was in the 1's place. And a 3 in the 10's place. So again, 0 and 3 tenths. So we use this model to set up our multiplication. 4 times 10, that would be 40. 4 times 5, that's 20. 4 times 2 tenths. Now here's the trick from before. I do 4 times 2, which is 8. But this wasn't whole number 2. This was a 2 one place behind the decimal. So out of these digits that I have, and yes, I only have one, one of them 
this one has to be behind a decimal. So behind a decimal means the decimal is going to come in front, and I'm going to fill in that zero. So 4 and 2 tenths is going to be equal to 0 and 8 tenths, because the number of digits behind a decimal in the problem have to match the number of digits behind a decimal in the answer, the product. Let's look at our second row. 0 and 3 tenths times 10. All right, for just a moment, I ignore the decimal, and I do 3 times 10. Well, 3 times 10 is 30, but it wasn't 3, it was 3 tenths. And so in this problem, there is one digit behind the decimal. And so out of these digits that I wrote down, doing my 3 times 10, one of them has to be behind the decimal. So I start at the back, one digit has to be behind the decimal, and so that is really just three, because I could leave that one off, but I had it there first, and one digit has to be behind the decimal, and it's going to be that zero. Zero and three tenths times five. Again, ignoring the decimal for a minute, multiplying my numbers, three times five would be 15, but again, it wasn't three, this was three tenths, one digit behind the decimal, so one of these digits, the 5 at the back, has to be behind the decimal. So 0 and 3 tenths times 5 would be 1 and 5 tenths. This one has two decimals, one in each factor, and so I'm going to ignore those for a moment and do 3 times 2, which is 6. Now, I have one digit, two digits that are supposed to be behind a decimal, and I only have one digit here. Okay, well this one has to be behind a decimal, and another digit has to be behind a decimal, but I don't have a digit there, and so I need to fill in a six, or excuse me, a zero, and the zero has to come in front of the six, because I still need this to read as just plain old six. If I had put the zero behind, that would have changed it to 60, and three times two was not 60, it was six. So I'm filling in my zero right here. Now I have two digits. They need to be behind a decimal. And you know we don't start with a decimal, so I'm filling in another zero there, placeholder. I've got zero and six hundredths. So three tenths times two tenths is six hundredths. Now after we multiply each of these parts, we add them together, which I've done over here. And so I've lined up my decimals, that's important when we're adding, filled in some extra zeros here at the end of these numbers so that I can add, and when I'm finished adding, I get 65 and 36 hundredths, so my answer, 65 and 36 hundredths would be our product. I want you to place the decimal in each of these products. The digits are right, but they're missing the decimal, so please fill that in. And then I want you to use that area model to solve these two problems in your math journal.